Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth, NFL Week 8 edition with Phil and Bud. I'm Dan Salem. We all went one and one on our ATS picks last week, so we're hanging in there. Got a pretty good season going. It's volatile. I got a nice stat for you. The uh, NFC, I think, is 25 and 9 against the spread this, this year. So they are rolling. Uh, NFC uh, favorites, that is. I'm going to keep that in mind on Sunday. I did not know that. I'll, I'll, I'll start with my ATS picks for week eight. I, I like the Bears. They're getting three and a half at San, or versus San Francisco. So Chicago's the home team, and they're getting three and a half points. Now, yes, they looked terrible against the Buccaneers last week, but they still managed to run the ball pretty successfully against one of the best run defenses in the league, which means to me that they are going to do much better running the ball against the 49ers who barely hung with the Colts. Regardless, I'm not impressed with San Francisco. I don't think they're very good. I think that they can play well, but Chicago got something to prove. I mean, their coach is playing for his job right now. All right. And, and then I'll throw my second pick out there because I know Bud's going or no, Bud's not going head to head on me, but he almost challenged me with this one. I like Tennessee. They are giving up one point against the Colts, and their running game is just dominating teams. They dominated the last two weeks. And while Indianapolis played well and looked pretty good. I'm not impressed with the 49ers. So I don't think that victory speaks to the competition level here. One point's nothing, Titans roll. It makes you, it makes you wonder how Tennessee lost to the Jets. <laughs> it really does. I mean, minus a receiver or two. Come on, they shouldn't have. <laughs> I mean, just what one of them, one of them well, we'll get into it. But well, who you got? I'm going to take, I'm gonna take uh, Chargers laying five and a half over the Patriots. The Patriots are... Uh, Unless they're playing the Jets, they are not of a good football team. And then I am going to take uh, the Bengals over the Jets, and I will lay the nine and a half. They have no Zach Wilson and uh, probably no Mosley in the center. Yeah, well, that's a big deal for them. <laughs> we'll get into it. I, like, well, yeah, I know, I know Phil win. agrees with you, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I would take that game at Cincinnati minus 14 and a half. I, I completely agree with you. The J- who are the who on the Jets is going to cover Jamar Chase? Who? No one. No, no one. The, Jamar Chase has these spectacular catches and runs every week. Uh, I love I love that pick. That's that's my best bet of the weekend. I can't he wait. Had, he had two hundred yards receiving against a a pretty decent secondary in Baltimore, and uh, the cool. Jets secondary is um, suspect. Dumps the fire. So yeah. And <laughs> Cincinnati's got a pretty good running game going too. Like. Two or three of their backs are all putting up decent numbers every week. The Jets can't. Oh stop. yeah, I forgot about those guys too. Yeah. Is does it does the narrative still hold true that the Jets suck against the tight ends? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not sure who they don't suck against at this point. But I do, I do need to pick up a I do need to pick up a tight end in fantasy for another league. So I'm looking at TJ Uzama. So and then the other one, I'm just I'm going to take the ten points with the Giants. It's call it a homer pick, but Kansas City can't guard anybody. Kansas City is is last in their division. Super Bowl hangover is real. Uh, 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 Mahomes got his cl- – Mahomes' head almost got taken off his body last week. I don't know how he's going to play. I know he's going to, but figuratively speaking, he got his bell rung on Sunday. But they can't guard anybody. And I don't know if Saquon's coming back. I think uh, Canarius Tony might be coming back this week. They can't cover anybody in the secondary. So they may not win the game, but I'll take the 10 points. I, I like that foot to pick, though, because the Giants remembered how to play defense last week. And so, unless so, they so I, so I wanted to pose this question now that we got our picks out of the way. Was it the Giants playing better, or is Carolina just not as good as everyone thinks and Sam Donald just regressed to his normal self? No, I think uh, it has everything to do with there's no Christian McCaffrey. Without, without McCaffrey, that offense is, is one dimensional and nothing. Yeah. Like, and it also, that's on Darnold, also, though. That's well, on yeah, Darnold. But, but then it also puts all the pressure on Sam to, to yeah. be far superior and that's when he crumbles yeah. mm-hmm. so so the narrative lately is that and maybe this was the same with the jets i don't remember is that donald's not going through his progressions he's looking for dj Moore, and if dj Moore is not open that's it you know he does oh. anderson on the team too i think he forgets yeah. that I, i'm not sure so if that's the narrative with him that's unfortunate because those are rookie mistakes but he is not a player that can put the team on his shoulders and succeed he puts the team on his shoulders like the best of them, and then he fails, and then he shrugs it off and is like, eh, just another game. I'll do better next week. But listen, defense showed up, a bunch of turnovers, and, and I, I don't, I'm sure you guys didn't see the whole game, but 
Well, I was following along. It was three to two. It was five to three. <laughs> it was three to two. <laughs> that was what was that was like an expected score. Then the Giants pulled away, and I was shocked. But they, they also had a lot of stupid, like illegal man downfield penalties on on drives where they would have been in field goal range and took them out. So stupid penalties, which you can't do. That's an undisciplined team. You can't make those those mistakes. But it. So when they were losing three to two, did you think they were going to pull the game off? No, <laughs> three to two. I mean, it's. It, <laughs> First half was awful, completely awful to watch. And, and luckily it turned around in the second half, but that was, that was a rough first half watch. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And, and, but, and let's, let's be serious. The Giants didn't play that great. Phil no, seemed but to think, they Phil seemed to think that their defense uh, showed up. Their defense played against a, a bottom feeder of a football team offensively. And let's, let's keep in mind here that for a half of football, it was five to three. <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is not like they were, you know, uh, you know, knocking the socks off offensively. I mean, it took two and a half, almost three quarters for the Giants to finally put some points on the board. So let let's not anoint the Giants as this great defensive, uh, well, no, I don't think it, football team. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think anybody was doing that. So then, do we really think their offense is enough to hang with Kansas City? No. It, that, I mean, maybe they can cover ten, though. I don't know. Like I said, I, I like the 10, and maybe we'll get Galladay back. Maybe we'll get Kadarius. Kadarius, I'm saying this right now. Maybe I said it last week. Kadarius Tony is everything Odell Beckham was, and he'll be better than that. Kadarius Tony looks awesome. All right, let's 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 talk about the Jets game. I don't know how Jack Wilson's leg didn't come off the on the first hit. Like, what was it, plays prior? I mean, they were – wow. Those Patriots suspenders were diving headfirst at his knees, and nobody well, called a penalty. Me. It was uh, – You know, if that was, if that was Tom Brady – that's a 15 yard roughing. I mean, what? I know. <laughs> they didn't call a damn thing. There was like, that was really, really bad when they were diving at his legs. And then when he couldn't come up, I wasn't surprised because they kept diving at his knees. It was unbelievable. Like, now, I mean, the Jets haven't earned the right to get calls, but something that egregious. I mean, come on, they're calling like taunting penalties. Didn't they find CD Lamb like 15 grand for waving bye bye? Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, give me a break. Yeah, so, Bud, I, I was channeling my inner you this week when the Patriots went up 3 nothing or 7 nothing, whatever it was, and then the Jets went 3-0, and out. I was like, yep, game over. <laughs> Dude, the, the game was 14 nothing with 10 minutes left in the first quarter. You had two weeks to prepare for this game. You knew what you were getting. You knew what you were doing. And you, it, they looked unprepared, unmotivated, uncoached, overmatched against a mediocre offensive football team who put 54 points out, the most points the Jets have given up since 1971, by the way. You know, and I joke with you guys, and I joke with my with my brother and my dad, and, you know, it is, it is genuinely embarrassing to be a Jets fan. And last week, we had this debate about whether or not we felt the Giants were the worst team in football. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Jets are the worst team in football. And the reason I say this, and you could tell me that the Lions are 0-7 and Houston doesn't have it. Houston, Houston was up against the same team that the Jets put, uh, allowed 54 points against. Houston was beating that team by double digits, and Houston just let them come back into the game. The Lions have been competitive, and if it wasn't for a couple of bounces the wrong way, the Lions could easily have two or three wins. They are regressing. They look worse than they did last year against with an inept coach was clearly looking to do whatever he wanted. From week one, to now, well, let's they set, look. Yeah, they look worse. I would say let's set last week, last year aside. But absolutely, from week one to now, they do look worse. And from before the buy to after the buy, they look worse, which should never happen. Never happen. And you know, it's even more ridiculous. I know that you're living the life on the Pacific Coast here, but you know, now all of a sudden, everyone's like, "Well, you know, maybe Mike White is the answer at quarterback. No. You know, maybe, maybe you know, maybe Zach Wilson doesn't fit." Did they watch any of the freaking football game? They're just trying to incite violence. I watched Mike White. He was lucky to score that touchdown when he when he got the ball at the one yard line. Well, I mean, I made the joke. I said instant offense, and Dan made the point that they were first and goal at the one or something. Yeah, yeah and he was lucky that that <laughs> happened. Like he was lucky to throw that pass. Like he does not know what he's doing. He's never played this first team offense in his life before, and he's. Why do I put myself through the aggravation every single freaking week? I get dressed up. I put on a Jets tie. I make sure I look sharp. I put on my Jets socks. I have green underwear on. For what? For what? <laughs> you got a whole process to lose. I got a whole that. process. 
And you know what? You know what I've realized? It doesn't matter what I wear. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter where I watch the game, how I sit on the couch, you know, how I twiddle my ears. They even suck. They're terrible. I'm really, I'm really happy you matter. finally. I'm really happy you finally realized that it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> but you, may, may I make a suggestion? Your um, your pregame ritual must include chasers to wipe away the pain. Like, where is that part of the ritual? Because this team constantly hurts you in like the first five minutes. You gotta have. Well, that's that. at the, that's at the that's at the end of the night during Sunday night football. Tommy texts me the other day and he says, buddy, you know, um, you had mentioned maybe going to a Jets game the day after Christmas. The tickets right now, this is no joke, the tickets right now, you can sit on the 50-yard line on like the second row of the third deck. $25 a ticket. I don't know if I want to pay it. The Jets have the youngest roster in all the NFL. Yeah, they do. But that, but that's not an excuse for ineptitude. No, 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 it isn't. And so the coaches are standing firm with their stance like, this is our this is our scheme. I don't think they changed the damn thing over the bye week. Like they like their offense, they like their defense. It's got to work at some point this season, or it's trouble. It's got it's got to work, and especially considering how they're regressing, they're not progressing. And then on the on the flip side, you know, it, it, they look out coached. They look confused every single week. Listen, if either if either three of us had a two week two weeks to plan for something. And after those two weeks, we went in and laid a complete goose egg and looked unprepared for a meeting and our presentation sucked and we couldn't answer the questions properly. None of us would have a job. Now, and I'm not saying that it needs to get, everybody needs to get fired. But what I'm saying is, is that at some point, accountability is going to have to be held and we can't just continue to pawn off this excuse of, well, everybody's young or, you know, we're, it's a, we're building, we're building here. Or, you know, we knew that this year was good. This team, no joke, may not win another game this year. Let's put a, let's put a ribbon on this tie up the show here. The, the Jets, we slapped the rebuild label on the season, right? We slapped the rebuild and that's almost a mulligan. So the, the team said we're rebuilding and it's a mulligan. Now we shouldn't give them a pass as fans because this is product is unwatchable. It's not competitive. It's not fun. I mean, I enjoyed watching the Rams last Sunday. I, I didn't really watch much of the Jets game because it was awful. Awful. Remember, remember when you were debating whether or not to buy Sunday ticket? I think you saved yourself a lot of money. I absolutely did. There are a couple of games I've been able to watch. Through my, worth the it. games I found are terrible. And I went through them all. <laughs> it's, it's, you, you ended up making the right choice. I get to watch the two LA teams because they're local and they're great football. So I win.